Hello and welcome back to Let's Make an Atari Game. In this episode, I'm going to talk about uh, changing the game from a turn-based game to a real-time one. And also, I've done a bit of costing to see how much it costs to make the, the cartridge and the labels, uh, the box, and the manual. First off, let me show you what I've managed to accomplish this week. So one of the first new things is that you fire in the direction you've last moved in. And so you can fire left, right, down, up, also diagonally. It also continues to fire in the last direction you fired in. So you don't have to keep pressing a direction to, to fire in that direction. So if I want to fire diagonally, I can just keep firing it. Originally, I didn't want to do it this way uh, because I thought it was hard to aim. I think making it continue to fire in the last direction you moved in makes it a lot easier to aim. It doesn't feel too bad. So now when you go into a room with monsters, they're going to start attacking right away. For example, this ghost. Okay, we got two. And you can dodge their fire now. So, as expected, <laughs> so this is a lot harder than the other version was, and I actually had to turn off their damage because they kept killing me, and it's making it really hard to test the game. So I think I'm going to have to lower their damage a bit um, and balance this game around real time now. So you can also still walk up and hit them, but uh, your weapon, if you're using a ranged weapon, it does less damage than if you were using a sword. That's another thing you can do, you can pause the when you're selecting your inventory now, the, the action pauses. That's so you can change things without being hand hounded here. There we go, that was probably for the best. So I removed uh, Monster 3, and I saved about a thousand bytes of ROM space. I also took out the targeting for double clicking because it's not necessary now that you can aim your shots really how you want. And that saves some more space. So now I've got plenty of space to finish this game. That's the good news. So right now, it's still the same four monsters that I've always been testing with. But it's about to have a Cambrian explosion of monsters soon. Because most of the code is in. Almost all of it, actually. I still have a few things I'm not sure if I'm going to put in or not. Um, boss monsters and how I'm going to control the final boss. Those are all going to take up a fair bit of space if I do it how I really want to, but I'm not sure if that's possible yet. So the next thing I'm going to add is more weapons, more characters, more monsters, more treasure. And I'll also try to find uh, the best number of dungeons uh, to explore before reaching the end. I'm thinking maybe 20? I'm not sure how, it depends how fast I can get through 20. I think each level should have a new monster or a new item or something to pick up as well, so I need to consider how many items I have to add if I want more dungeon levels than 20 or 30 dungeon levels. And how long it takes to play. Oh, man, it is hard to fight them when they're up close. Um, I think I'll have to slow them down as well. Ah, man. When they ambush you at the door like that, man, it's hard to get out of there. So the other thing I did, I started looking at costing this thing out. How many of these do I have to sell to break even? So if, I, if my career was a retro programmer, how many of these copies would I have to sell? So I did a bit of costing, and these are just preliminary costs. I'm not really sure if I could get this cheaper for the same quality or not. What I want for this release is some of the things that we've lost along the way. For example, if you buy a new game today, provided you can get it, a physical copy of it, it never, they don't even come with manuals anymore. So I definitely want to create a, ma a manual. It doesn't have to be one of those giant manuals with 500 pages because obviously this game isn't that difficult to learn how to play. But I want it to be, you know, it looked nice and glossy. Um, I want it to look a little bit better than the actual real Atari manuals. So what I'm thinking of is a spiral bound manual. That's going to increase the cost a bit. But I think people who are buying this game for the physical copy, they would appreciate you know, a nicer manual or a nicer box. Because why else would you get it like that? Why else would you want a physical copy? I mean, you could just download it and play it. So my initial costing for this manual, is that what it's called, costing? Am I using the right lingo? If I use a spiral bound notebook, a nice quality one that I want to use, it costs me about $5 per manual. So already the game has to cost $5 
for me to break even. The next thing I want to add is an actual cartridge. Now this is the most expensive part. Because I'm going to be buying these cartridges from Atari Age, and I think the version I need is the Melody version, which costs $25 each. Now the game has to cost at least $30 to break even. You see how it's, do you see where this is going? Now the boxes are kind of a problem for Atari and Nintendo games especially because when you open them you kind of ruin them a bit. It's not like the Sega Genesis or the Sega Mega Drive boxes that are plastic and you open them up and they're designed to hold the cartridge in there without ruining the box or the manual. With Nintendo and Atari boxes you kind of ruin them a little bit each more every time you open the box. But I also don't want the box to look out of place when it's sitting with a collection of other Atari boxes. So what I've decided to do was go with the dimensions of the Atari box, but open it like a, like a book cover. So the front cover of a book, you open it up and inside there'll be the cartridge in the manual. So you can open and close the box without ruining it. So that costs about $6 per box. So I have to sell the game for six plus five, 11 plus 25, What's the 25 plus 11? 36? If I sold it for 36, that would be the break-even point. I wouldn't make any money on it. So I had to look at Atari Age, and some of the games there with boxes and manuals sell for $50. So I would make... I'm bringing out the calculator. What am I at? $36? Yeah, I'll bring out the calculator. If I... um, So if it costs $36 and I sell it for 50, I make $14 per sale. But how much did it cost to program it. If you were to pay someone to program it, you're, this is this is not including the time I've spent programming it. So I think if I was an experienced Atari programmer, it would take me about a full-time month to write a game like this if I was more experienced than I am now. So let's say they make $60,000 a year. Eh. $60,000 a year divided by 12. That's $5,000 a month. So that costs $5,000, right? So how many do I need to sell to earn that $5,000 back? So, well, it's pretty simple. We just divide it by um, the, the amount you're, you're earning per box, which would be about $14. So I need to sell about 360 games with the box and the manual to break even. So there's the problem right there. I don't think you can sell that many even if you had an excellent game, I don't think there's that many people who are willing to pay $50 for an Atari 2600 game. You could, I think you could easily sell 50 to 100, no problem. It starts getting a bit questionable when you get to around 200, 250. So if I could get that down to 250 and break even, well, that's fine then. If I was to put my game on eBay for $50, it what? what <laughs> one a week? How long would that take? One, 357, 357, uh, to multiplied by seven, it would take me, uh, what, let me do it in years, divided by 365, 64, whatever, 365. <laughs> it would take, if I was to sell one game a week at $50 on eBay, it would take me almost seven years to earn back what I've spent in a month. Now consider this, what if the game was released in Atari's heyday where you could move 100,000 units in a week or a month or something like that ridiculous. 100,000 at $14, you know, profit. And now you've earned $1.4 million and that's how crazy things were back in the 1980s. So that's it for now, the game is now real time. It's a lot harder to play. Uh, I need to make the monsters a little bit easier. So next week I'll have a lot more monsters and items in and I'll probably start designing the box and the manual if everything goes well. Thanks for watching.